Hi everybody, thank you very much for joining us on a Friday night here in Thailand and I uh, hope you can hear us okay. Of course I'll do the obligatory check and I'm sure if there's any problems you'll do your best to tell me what's going on. But uh, I've had a very, very busy day. Okay. Better turn that off, looks like it's working though. I had to just uh, very quickly reboot the computer just before the program, so apologies for being a couple of minutes late. Now, we will be talking about a few issues today, uh, trying to wade through what's happening with the, uh, the Thai politics. We won't linger on it too much because there's not really much I can add to uh, what you probably already know. And there are so many tentacles in this octopus at the moment, nobody really knows what's going on. There's meetings and phone calls and uh, the press saying one thing and five minutes later it's something different. So it's very hard to predict. Suffice to say that uh, probably sometime next week there will be a joint sitting of the parliament and they'll have another go at it. But it, it really is a constitutional impasse caused by, well, I suppose a failed constitution that's allowed this rubbish to happen. Um, it was voted for by the Thai people back in 2017, but I don't really think they read the fine print. And it was pushed through by the uh, the junta, and it uh, became the new constitution. I dare say it will be changed when they get a chance. Now, just uh, going through uh, a few things, people have criticised me over the past uh, week or so of uh, sort of pushing a narrative that all the retirement visas are going to be changed. I've gone out of my way to try and make sure uh, to say that although the rumours uh, or the comments in the media have been made by a senior police official, the deputy police chief, I've gone out of my way to say that nothing has been decided. We don't even have a government to change the laws. Not that there would be a requirement for the parliament to change the laws. The uh, Immigration Department could do that all by itself. The other uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I mean, it still functions, and they'd be able to make amendments to uh, the retirement visa without the Parliament even sitting. I suppose if the Parliament do actually um, pass a new Immigration Act, and that was suggested by the Deputy Police Chief, uh, then uh, it would have a, a, a bit more authority. Uh, anyway, if you think uh, I've been milking it, uh, which I don't really think I have. I've done three mentions about these comments made in the Thai media by Surachat Hakpan, the uh, deputy police chief in Thailand. But nothing like this gentleman, who uh, is actually a friend, uh, so I'm not uh, berating him here, but uh, here is... I hope this is going to work tonight. Is it not going to work? Oh, I'll try that. There we go. So Integrity Legal, my friend uh, Ben Hart from Integrity Legal Thailand, he's done 16 videos in 11 days. And uh, not only that, he's uh, also been milking, oh, where is the, uh, here we are, YouTube. And that's nothing to say of the shorts he's done on the same issue over the same period. So certainly he's uh, been, well, I think you could say he's been milking it. But, I mean, that's his job to try and uh, sift through the, the, the entrails and come up with something cogent in, in a legal manner. I've just uh, been doing it more as just uh, simply reporting what's been in the news. Uh, so uh, I thought it's worth talking about that at some stage this evening. We should uh, go through... I've actually got a lot of questions here already. It is great to have you with us, by the way. I don't know what you're doing with me here on a Friday night. If you're in Thailand, you should be out going to a movie or going to a bar or doing something interesting. Uh, if you're overseas, I think uh, Scott D was saying he's in Chicago and it was only 8 a.m. So exactly 12 hours behind. Here in Phuket, I can hear the rain and it's uh, 8 p.m. or six minutes past eight on a Friday night. I've been up since uh, 5.30 this morning. Of course, I did the morning program, which, by the way, was demonetized because we dared to show that footage of those um, British guys and the, uh, the, the, what do they call them? The bouncers at the bar having a bit of our, a fracas out the front of a bar. A lot of comments in the comments section saying oh, they're right or they're right. Uh, so people quite torn on that. But yeah... YouTube demonetized me. So all that hard work this morning, well, I mean, I have hopefully passed on some good Thai news, but from a monetary point of view, zip, 
won't get a cent for today's video. Anyway, that's uh, YouTube for you. You do your best and you push the grey line from now and then and they push right back. And of course, it's not really somebody sitting there going, hmm, I think we'll demonetize them. It's basically a bot doing the hard work for them. And um, yeah, anyway, that's what happened. So hello to Timo, to Iataron, to John's Journey. Maybe I should turn the light up here. they will see it a bit better. Uh, to Charles, David, Jaffa, Greg, Moses Braun, GTV, Alan James, uh, Kenji, Nomad Ninja, Bill G, I've got Scott D, of course, Paul Henry, Henry, Paul Henry, Henry. You've got a stutter there, Paul. So uh, anyway, there's uh, the Queensland Tiger, hmm. uh, cruising the Thai way, Antoine, David B, all those people. So great to have you with us. And uh, some people have sent me questions in the last day. I'll try and get to those. Uh, but uh, let's go through the questions here. Uh, Timo, question, where's the yellow duck? Well, there's a yellow duck in the pool outside, uh, just floating around as we speak. That's a big one. Uh, I don't have the small yellow duck, that's Steve's, and we only have that yellow duck so I can squeak it if I want to cut Steve off. I mean, I could go like that, but squeezing the yellow duck is perhaps a little bit more, well, it's not really any more subtle, is it? Anyway, uh, the, the duck is uh, happily ensconced in Steve's residence. I'm still down here in Kokao in Phuket. Uh, I've announced on my Facebook page this week, not that anybody particularly cares, <coughs> excuse me, that I will be moving up to um, Pangna, to, uh, Panga is the correct pronunciation, Panga from the end of September. So I'm moving out of my house, so I put a post up uh, advertising if somebody wants to rent it. It's not my house, I've been renting it, but I was doing that on behalf of the landlady. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we had uh, four or five people come through, and it's gone in two days. Uh, somebody liked it. Pretty good deal, actually, I thought. Uh, the landlady has put the price up a bit, but um, hasn't gone up in three years since I've been here, and prices in Phuket have really gone up over the past six months. Started to drop down a little bit uh, recently since that huge influx of Russians has slowed down. Uh, and I was going to go into that. Yes, I'll go into that in just a moment. The current demographics of who is coming to well, both Phuket and Thailand. Um, and I think there's something quite stark in those statistics, which we'll see in just a moment. What have we got here? I don't know what you've got in front of you. I've got this uh, black mug. There's some good advice. Love what you do. I love what I do. Except I'm starting to fade 15 hours after uh, I started work this morning. Been painting and running around. Uh, yes, I do have these two beach houses up in, um, oh, oh, we're calling it Turtle Beach, because nobody can pronounce Thai Mung. So uh, you've got these two beach houses. We've been renovating them. I will have a video showing you the before and the after. Just about finished the renovation. I've got a whole lot of furniture moving from here next week up there. So I think probably by next weekend, I'll be able to have some photos of at least the first beach house all finished and tarted up, ready to go. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, greetings from my village west of Concan. No rain for two days now. Parts of northern Thailand, west and northeastern, have been beset with very heavy rains. Other parts of, say, northeastern Thailand, according to our viewers, have said no rain at all. What's people talking about? So uh, the rain has been falling, but not necessarily universally. It's still quite localised. As happens with the monsoon, you get these waves of rain. Here in Phuket, it can be bright sunshine a couple, bright sunshine a couple of kilometres away. And then here where you are, it's a torrential rain. and You think it's happening all over the island, but it's not. Good evening, says Moses, and have a good weekend, everyone, from Heidelberg in Germany. Welcome, Moses. Thank you. Uh, GTV says, Tim, thank you for all the info. Alan, well, that's my job. Uh, Alan James says, Tim, you should do an interview on grumpy old men with Steve as Norman Gunston. A few bits of tissue stuck to your face and your personality and you would be very believable. Well, now I suppose most of the people out there, uh, Alan, would have no idea who Norman Gunston is, uh, played by a guy called Gary McDonald. It was his uh, sort of alter ego. 
uh, a very sort of uh, complex and, uh, well, it's very hard to describe Norman Gunston, a creature from the 1970s. Type in Norman Gunston, G-U-N-S-T-O-N, in your Google machine or the YouTube machine, and you'll see Norman Gunston. I think his funniest interviews were with Paul McCartney and Sally Struthers, just coming to mind, but that's a long time ago. Uh, what else we got here? I stopped watching news in America because it didn't contain any value to me, says um, GTV. Nomad Ninja, hello from Chumpon. Very nice part of the world. Chumpon, about halfway from Bangkok to Phuket, and it's along the coast, south of uh, Hua Hin. And yeah, I stayed there when I did my road trip back from Bangkok in the new Mercedes. And yeah, we stayed at some very nice beaches uh, there. Bill G says, I arrived in Thailand a month ago. I'm now working as a demonst- at a demonstration school in Ong Karak, northeast of Bangkok. I spent eight years in China as a teacher last year. I was home in America. You're getting around, Bill G. Welcome to Thailand. Ken G. I hope Tim shows up at a beach table with a flowered shirt in front of his newly acquired beach bungalow. I'm sure that will be happening in a few weeks. Scott G. says, greetings from the Windy, greetings from the windy City. Uh, Paul Henry Henry. How was your trip to Thailand, Scott? Oh, <laughs> Uh, I'm in Chumpon too, says cruising the Thai way. Antoine, good evening, good day. So uh, my feed seems to have come to a, a bit of a sudden stop there. Uh, I Maybe I have to refresh that or something. So if I, oh, this could go all very, very badly. Everybody, just talk amongst yourselves uh, whilst I just refresh <coughs> my uh, screen here. Ah, that's better. So, um, okay. Uh, Tim, I live in the boonies. Nothing to do here on the weekend unless you're unless you like drinking beer. This is from Bill G. It's one a.m. in New Zealand. Uh, I'm at work. Well, Jeff or Greg, you better tell us what you do. Are you uh, a nurse or are you a doctor, brain surgeon, nuclear physicist? Uh, okay, three p.m. in Stockholm. That's a good time. That's from Mikhail. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Jippo says, I'm in Lampang. So uh, this might be interesting, and I'll get to uh, these comments and other questions a little bit later. Uh, If you do want to ask a specific question or make a comment, put a great big capital question or a great big capital comment so I can see it uh, amongst all the uh, other feeds and the chit-chat between Scott and everybody else. So I thought this might be an interesting story uh, for you. As I drop that down and I press that, and this is from a Phuket-Go.com, Chinese take over from Russians as Phuket's most frequent visitors. Now, the article actually is uh, not only about Phuket, but about the national uh, numbers. These are the people arriving in Thailand at the moment. And Chinese have taken over from Russian visitors as the most numerous to come through the Thai immigration turnstiles at the moment. Nationally, Russian visitors are not even in the top five anymore. Whilst in Phuket, the arrival numbers have dropped off drastically. That's the numbers of Russians. Compared to the influx from December 2022 to February 2023 this year, it was like 120, 130, 140,000 visitors per month. Now, uh, nationally, here we go, over the past week, the foreign arrivals were Chinese, 95,000, Malaysian, 73,000, and uh, we've noted here many of those are just day or weekend trips for locals across the southern border. Well, look, there's still visitors. They're coming over. They're having a shop. Uh, some of them might be having a naughty weekend in Sungai Kalok, but they're spending money here. Uh, so, I mean, they are tourists at the end of the day. South Koreans, 37,000, a big drop off from the Chinese and the Malaysian numbers. Then Indians, who have really uh, been holding the numbers up over the past 12 months. And Vietnamese. Now, what do you notice about those five nationalities? Except maybe the Chinese, you'd consider them all short haul. Uh, China, about five, uh, three to five hours to travel from parts of China. Uh, Indians, it's about a three-hour flight over to, uh, to, or from some airports to Thailand. 
uh, Vietnamese, South Korean. I mean, they're all short haul uh, destinations. We don't have any people coming out. Well, we do have people, but they're not in the top five from the UK, the US, Europe, uh, even Australia. But uh, now let's check the numbers in Phuket. Interesting to see that they're quite a bit different. In Phuket, during the month of July, the numbers, the Chinese, number one again, uh, 74,000, then a long way down from the 130, 140,000 we were having arriving in Phuket at the start of the year, down to 35,000 arrivals. Australians, not too bad for a country of 26 million, taking the eight or nine hour flight and it's uh, 24,700 people. Indians, 17,000 and Hong Kong visitors, I suppose you could really uh, call them Chinese at the end of the day. I mean, it's part of China again, uh, 13,000, nearly 14,000. So that's the demographics of the people visiting Thailand and uh, Phuket at the moment. So I thought that might be of interest to you and uh, those Numbers coming to us um, from the Immigration Department and also reported in Phuket-Go.com. What else do we have to talk about there? Uh, Yeah, well, we do have changes to the uh, requirements for Chinese to visit Thailand, so I'll get into that in a moment. But uh, let's address some more of your comments. And, uh, oh, a few big thank yous. Thank you very much to Lost in Australia from Dave. Uh, really appreciate your uh, kind and generous support. Not solicited, not expected, but always very grateful when it turns up. Also, JS in Melbourne. Oh, you've got to like these um, Melbourners. Uh, let's re-monetize Tim. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, uh, JS in Melbourne. Appreciate your support. No, I'm not uh, uh, soliciting those, but it's very nice when it happens. A question from Drew Kassa. Any news on the arrival tourist fee tax? Well, what's the latest on that? As far as I know, they put it off. I think they handballed it to the new government. They put it off till at least September this year. This was uh, going to be a arrival tax. We've already got a 700 baht departure tax. You've probably been paying that. You didn't even notice but they talked about this 300 baht arrival tax to be introduced. They really couldn't figure out how they were going to collect it. They were trying to put it on the airlines, and the airline said, uh, no, we fly aeroplanes. We don't want to collect your wretched uh, tourist tax, tourist levy, whatever you want to call it. But my understanding is it will be handballed to the new government. We don't have a new government in Thailand. So uh, I think the Ministry of Tourism and Sport could probably make the decision itself but they don't want to take the responsibility. Nobody does. So uh, we don't have a a tourist tax at the moment, Uh, nothing until at least September. I figure it's going to be at least the end of the year before we hear it mentioned again. I'll certainly do my best to uh, keep you informed. Uh, Wig Alerts is how many Kuwaitis? I don't know, but uh, people from the Middle East, there's certainly been quite uh, high numbers, but they're not making the top five in either Phuket or nationally. Uh, Maybe combined, Middle Eastern countries uh, might be in the top five, but not individual countries like Kuwait or Saudi Arabia. Uh, Ross Kennedy, hi Tim, finally had a couple of fine days in the northeast, but the Mekong is rising rapidly. Lots of river villages having problems, uh, I can imagine. Good evening from the UK, says Lee Evans, welcome. Uh, what's the time difference, Lee? You might need to tell us. Uh, I think you're about, what, six or seven hours behind? Something like that. Uh, jet set journeys, flights too expensive along with everything else. Yeah, I think the uh, the long haul market's been really affected by the cost of flights. And it seems, uh, although a lot of people predicted the the prices for flights would come down very quickly, they haven't. You can get uh, some good deals, no doubt. If you jump on the internet at the right time, you know your way around the search engines, you know how to find the cheap flights. There are more reasonable flights available, especially if you, especially if you book two, three, four months uh, out ahead. Uh, Dusty's turn up, turned up to say hello. She may or may not make an appearance. It's up to her. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, the cost of flights is really a major stumbling block. People seem to want to travel. 
Uh, there seems to be um, a backlog in people's mind of wanting to get out and about, but it appears they're travelling locally. Certainly the tourists that are coming here at the moment are travelling regionally. They're travelling locally. Uh, blah, 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 blah. How do you think you're sending super... How do you think you're sending super chats? I don't understand the question, but thank you very much. Uh... Okay, one Kuwaiti equal the trouble of 100 Aussies. Oh, that's not really very fair. I should have read that first. Uh, question. Now, Shane O Traveller, you didn't write the whole word question. You just wrote the letter Q. Tim, what's the numbers of Patia travellers? I don't have that information. Uh, Phuket, of course, has got its own international airport. It's got uh, one... Uh, checkpoint arriving on the airport uh, arrive, arriving on the airline i was thinking because i've come through that checkpoint so often the last couple of weeks tacha chai checkpoint it's called what other provinces have a checkpoint to get into the province i can't think of any i think maybe phuket's the only province that you have a checkpoint to come through now you don't have to show any documents i mean i usually just take my sunglasses off so i don't look too criminal and uh, just wave or salute them as i come through and uh you just drive through but every they've got officers checking every single car and bus that comes through and uh, they will check uh, i don't know what they're looking for but they do stop um i've seen a few buses stopped i've seen a few cars stopped and they've asked a few questions so, yeah, if you can think of any other province in Thailand where you have to uh, go through a checkpoint, be it an airport or a road checkpoint like here in Phuket, I'd be interested to know. So it's very hard to tell you who's going into Pattaya because you've got all those roads going into Pattaya. There's no checkpoints. There's no numbers being counted. So uh, I don't have that information. I don't think anybody's got that information the only way would be to walk around the streets and go, yeah, there's lots of people here, and uh, try and, you know, pick a nationality. Greg Partridge, my family, wished to something over over to see, come over to see me, I suppose, but flight prices prohibited, prohibited them going to Bali, of oh, going to Bali. Greg, you need to uh, find a few full stops, okay? But they went to Bali instead. Uh, assumed they were coming from Australia. The trail running experience in Bangkok, the HK is Hong Kongers were spending money, heard Cantonese uh, in all the HISO restaurants. Uh, okay, not cheap to get there though. Thank you, Jet Set Journeys, you're right. Uh, Big Pelican says next year. I think we've got an appearance. Um, well, we had a brief appearance from Dusty. Thank you very much, Dusty, for your appearance. Hello, Tim and all, says Bob B. Hi, Bob. Ben Lee. Hey, mate, just sub, uh, subscribe. Been watching your channel for ages from Mornington Peninsula, Frankston area. I lived, I was born in Mornington and uh, lived in Frankston. I had a lovely house up there on, in Cliff Road. In those days when I had money, <sighs> memories. Uh, ben Lee, hey mate, just subscribed, been watching your channel for ages from the Mornington Peninsula. Oh, I read that. After the stream, Tim will bang the tunes on the radio there and dance to a bit of rock and roll. These are my retro collection uh, radios. They look pretty cool, don't they? Uh, as I've mentioned before, they are actually AM and FM radios, but... Uh, they got the, uh, where is it there, the MP3 plug-in. So you plug in your USB and uh, they play uh, whatever's on your USB. So pretty cool, aren't they? Recreations, 300 baht each. Pissing down outside at the moment. Uh, US, uh, UK is six hours behind, says Logan Crawford. Thank you very much, Logan. Appreciate that. Uh, smelly Sumpton charming name currently around one dot one dollar us is 35 thai baht i think that's correct it's a great exchange rate but thai baht is still considered strong versus other asian currencies yes you are right and um i think people have noted that the thai baht the teflon thai baht seems to hold up uh, against a lot of the other currencies is it being manipulated 
I think with a floating currency, it's very hard to manipulate these days. I'm sure uh, there are some people out there who think there's some conspiracy to control the Thai baht. But uh, yeah, it goes up and down with the other currencies, um, along with other floated currencies. Uh, how many pilots signing up for the $47,000 USD to train to fly in Thailand? Wow, says Don Jordan. I, I'm unaware of that story, Don. If uh, you might like to send me a link to that, you can always send me an email at timnewtontoday at gmail.com. A good evening from Com- Kelly says hello. Good evening. Uh, two twenty-two p.m. in the UK. Has the price of ah oh, it's disappeared? A uh, question from John's Journeys: If I want to retire in Thailand and have sixty-five thousand baht minimum in my savings account at all times, can I get a retirement visa? No, the 65,000 refers to the amount of money you'd have to have going into, uh, coming into Thailand each month. Uh, If you don't have that 65,000 per month coming into your bank account in Thailand from overseas, then you have to have 800,000 baht in your Thai bank account at the time you apply. And uh, then it has to be like that, I think, for at least two or three months somebody will correct me before you renew your uh, your visa each year uh, smash that like button says Pat Ty yeah I agree Pat smash that like button well don't smash it just click it gently would be fine ah the when I'm sitting here watching of course I'm trying to think of something intelligent to say which is difficult for me and um, all the messages are just going like this, so I'm trying to hold them back with uh, the button, but I don't usually do very well. Mr. Ben's World, speaking of checkpoints, when I lived in the Songkla province, they they were all over the place. Of course, it's not a mystery what they were looking for. Yeah, of course, you can have road checkpoints uh, anywhere in Thailand, and uh, you often see them around about 11 a.m., just before lunchtime. But uh, I'm talking about this whole province, uh, Phuket is not only an island, it's a province. And it's got the Tachachai checkpoint at the top of the island where the bridge, the 300 metre Saracen Bridge, comes uh, over from uh, the mainland. I mean, Phuket's only just an island by about 300 metres. And, uh, of course, you've got the airport. So you've got the international airport. So you've got those two checkpoints that you have to come through unless you arrive by boat. Good luck. Zeta Ziva, come over on an O, then can transfer to an OA. An agency will put the 800k baht in the bank. Well, look, at the end of the day, um, some visa agents will assist you get over the line with your compliance. Uh, You are, of course, taking a risk. Uh, Clive Baxter out there will say that you're corrupt, that you're a bad person, and that all visa agents are the worst people in the world. But this is just the way the system works. These visa agents are much loved by the immigration department. I can't tell you. And I've spoken to visa agents many over the years. I've spoken to people in uh, the immigration. And you can imagine... If you're in the immigration department, having a completely filled out, complete all ticks uh, application from a visa agent, they love that rather than a scrawny person walking through the door saying, now, uh, do I have to have 65? And, you know, with a thousand questions and they still need three bits of uh, paper and forgot to bring the photo and, oh, their passport's out of date. So the visa agents uh, provide a great service for the immigration department and they love that. But Z Deceiver, I mean, that's uh, certainly uh, an option, getting a visa agent to help you. You may have to shop around and you will have to pay for that service. And you are taking a risk. Uh, Colanta Sea Dragon Resort Hostel, good bit of uh, viral advertising there. What's happening with the Hotel Apartment Marigold project? Well, as I've said a few times, that's uh, on the skids. Well, it's on the shelf at the moment. Uh, I got ripped off by a one particular contractor 
and another but not quite so badly and uh, have had some problems with the owners so uh, I had to make a very difficult decision after throwing some good money at that and uh, I pivoted I suppose is the word to these two beach houses up on Turtle Beach instead and hopefully I can uh, reveal those to you in the next couple of weeks. Both of them have got two bedrooms uh, they're quite modern. I mean, they're more of an Airbnb. They're not really a hotel room. I've got this great little trolley. I've got two trolleys. Uh, one that uh, wheels out uh, a couple of beach chairs, you know, low slung beach chairs, and a nice little table and an esky with ice in it and a bottle of, uh, I don't think we're allowed to call it champagne, bubbly. And that's for people to go and watch the sunset uh, looking over the beach. And then the other one's got uh, some beach chairs, a little table, an umbrella. And uh, the thing that holds the umbrella down for people to go and sit on the beach and probably see nobody all day. It's a nice secluded beach. And uh, yeah, you could literally sit on that beach and not see anybody all day. You might see Steve Ross cruising up the beach, picking up, uh, well bits and pieces and detritus from uh, from offshore particularly this time of the year when the waves come in from the andaman sea he loves collecting cigarette lighters and if you watch grumpy old men you know what he's using those cigarette lighters for and it's not lighting cigarettes so hopefully that answers the question uh kun tim is looking for a thai assistant yes i am i'm looking for a thai assistant uh to help me run those two uh, beach houses because we're going to need to pick up people at the airport. People will want to go to the beach uh, or we need to you know, wheel the, uh, the champagne and oh, I said champagne, uh, wheel the bubbly and the chairs over so, so people can watch the sunset. People will want to go to Kowlak. Uh, people will want uh, this and that. They want to go, they want to know where the 7 Eleven is. I've got plenty of stuff to do, and whilst I'll be very happy to meet and greet the guests, I need somebody to help uh, and clean up uh, after people have been there, to uh, to provide a concierge service. People want to know, what can I do here? Uh, because it's not Phuket. You're 20 minutes north of Phuket, and there's some great things to see around Panga, but it's not Phuket. So if you want to go to Patong Beach, don't come and stay at the beach houses because it would be a good hour and a bit drive to take you to Patong Beach. Qu uh, question from Bill G. Hi, Bill. Uh, Tim, oh dear, I've done it again. Tim, you report from you report from Patia. What are your thoughts about all the violent crime you report on being done by foreigners? Is the number of crimes average of your area and Thailand? I I'm not in Patia. I'm in Phuket. Pattaya is, if you're going to drive, it's a good 14 or 15 hour drive from Phuket. Uh, would be probably quicker to swim across the Gulf of Thailand uh, and then walk across the Isthmus of Kra. Uh, so, uh, yeah, look, I mean, at the end of the day, the news is not going to say people are being well behaved in Pattaya at the moment. The stories you're going to read are when people have got their phone out and they've caught a fight on the camera. Of course the media is going to report that because there's pictures involved. And, uh, you know, it's a bit um, sensational. Uh, that report today, for example, that caused me to get demonetized, came from the Daily Mail, which is a bit of a rag in the UK. And uh, they love reporting that sort of stuff. And they know people are going to read it. And most of the comments I got on today's video were about that particular uh, video and the report from Patia. I don't think there's any more crime than there has been in the past. It's just that the media is going to report it because they're not going to report uh, that uh, six children arrived at kindergarten today and had a wonderful time. They're not going to uh, talk about... Uh, there's a lot of people going shopping at the moment and they use public transport. I mean, these are not uh, basically stories of interest. News, by its very definition, is usually bad news. And so that's why it seems that things are all very violent. But generally, I would say, not only in Patia, but uh, just about anywhere in Thailand, it's safe. It may not be the safest place in the world, but I would say it would be in the top 20. I've never had any fear 
are walking around the uh, the streets of Pattaya, uh, Phuket late at night, Bangkok. I lived up in Bangkok, out at all sorts of times of the day. Never had any fear walking around there. When I used to live in Melbourne, uh, I there were certain parts of Melbourne I wouldn't go after dark. Uh, places like King Street. Um, and, uh, I mean, the people who live there would know what I'm talking about. There's places you just don't go. So I feel safer generally in Thailand than I did in perhaps Australia, my, my own home country. Uh, generally, Thailand is a fairly safe place. Yes, there are crimes, but you hear about those crimes because the media are going to report them. They're not going to report all the wonderful things that are happening. I mean, if I was reading, uh, doing a program talking about... Uh, this festival or the, the, um, I don't know some exhibition and that's all I did it, it would be a showcase about uh, you know tourism and stuff now my numbers I promise you would be way 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 down I have an interest in news I do my best to try and be accurate uh, from time to time I'll make a comment maybe a wink maybe a snide remark uh, sometimes I'll even editorialize. I'll certainly make sure you know that I'm doing that. Uh, or if I'm going to make a prediction, I'll make sure that you know I'm making a prediction. But generally, I try and synthesize all the information out there and uh, pass it on to you in a compact 10 to 15 minute package. How can U.S. immigrants from the U.S. show our respect and love for Thailand? Uh, do what just about every other tourist does, come here, have a good time, spend money, behave yourself, acknowledge and uh, do your best to understand the culture, don't get into fights, uh, don't buy drugs, and uh, you'll probably be doing your very best to, uh, to give other American citizens a, a good name. Steve Ross with a, an E. Yeah, says Timothy Han. Yes, Steve Ross. That's his uh, channel, by the way. Hi, Steve, if you're watching. Uh, Steve would have much better things to do on a Friday night. He's probably in bed, by the way. Uh, will Steve be a potential renter, says Siam I am. No. Steve's got a lovely place up there on Turtle Beach. And uh, he lives down the other end of the road. I'm at the posh end. Of, uh, of the beach road. Steve's at the sort of the poor end, you know. So uh, I won't be seeing a lot of Steve. Of course I will. Steve's a great guy. And uh, I was in a restaurant the other day and he just rolled in, sat down. We had a good chat. So I'm sure I'll see Steve when I'm up there. I hope that your beach venture goes well, says Greg. Well, I mean, I'm sort of moving up to the beach. Let me tell you, the last week I've been driving a lot from Kok Gao, which is in the middle of um, Phuket. I live very close to the main road called Tep Kasatri Road. Now, I think in Pattaya, the equivalent would be Sukhumvit Road. And uh, I've been driving up past the airport and then up to the bridge and then through to Panga. The time it takes me to get from the airport to Turtle Beach is about 20, 25 minutes maximum. The time it takes me to get half of the distance, which is from my place in Kokao to the airport, it takes about an hour. The traffic the last couple of months has been horrendous. I don't know where all the traffic's coming from. Uh, even coming back tonight, uh, just coming through uh, the, the middle, through Talang, past the Heroines Monument, people coming to Phuket will know exactly what I'm talking about. The traffic has just been horrendous. There are fewer visitors on the island. That means there has to be fewer passenger vans. I don't know. The traffic has just been awful. I've never known it to be like this. I'm not going to miss the traffic at all. Uh, up in uh, Turtle Beach... You can stand in the middle of the road at most times of the day, close your eyes, and there won't be a car passing you, you know, for 10 minutes. Very, very quiet there. Turtle Beach is around about uh, three or four minutes' drive from the actual little township of Taimung. 
And, uh, yeah, it's got all the little stores and the cafes and the things that you'd look for. It's not boutique. It's not Western. It's very, very Thai. Uh, so if you do come to Thai Moon and Turtle Beach, don't expect uh, nightclubs. Don't expect fancy restaurants. Uh, don't expect uh, even fancy cafes. The cafes up there and the restaurants are very, very good. There's one Michelin star restaurant on Turtle Beach. Amazing, but it's there and the food is very, very good. Signs up along the wall. They're very, very proud about their inclusion in the uh, in the Michelin Guide. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm rambling uh, as usual. Aussie Chris, thank you very, very much for your very kind and generous thought. Uh, from Australia, hey Tim, got the Aussie football hooked up in Chiang Rai, mate. And listening to your live stream, can't get a better Friday night. L- used to love watching the footy on Friday night. Oh, hang on. Here comes my marinated chicken wings. The night just gets better. So um, I'm probably going to make a uh, an enemy. I don't know who your team is, Chris. Got about a 1 in 15 chance of uh, having the same team. A barrack for the Magpies. I've been a Collingwood supporter all my life sorry or hey um yes i was even a member of the football club for for years Uh, i used to go and watch it maybe a game every three months i just don't like crowds and all the noise but it is quite an occasion going to watch an australian rules football game if you don't know what we're talking about afl the australian football league type in afl football and uh, you'll see what I consider as one of the uh, the great sports. No protective gear. They're just at it. It's very, uh, very athletic and uh, yeah, not violent, but it, uh, yeah, you don't want to go out there thinking that you're going to be uh, in a ballet. Tim, you should really do just a last video on the Marigold so you don't have to keep repeating the explanation. Every live show says KJ. Look, you're probably right. But the thing is, I have mentioned it three or four times. So it's not as if people are going to watch that video, even if I made it. But look, you're probably right. It's not as if I want to keep on remembering it. I mean, I've lost money. I've had some pretty nasty experiences with uh, contractors and not so much the owner, but uh, a sort of things i probably just want to forget rather than keeping on reliving it anyway Aussie Chris thank you very much and I don't know which game you're playing I'm sure you'll tell me a bit later on in the video uh Shano Traveller beach house holidays would be nice and much needed a uh, hi Tim greetings from Singapore says Ice Cougar have you ever been to uh Alamanda water park a- Anamanda I think is what you're talking about and and am an amanda anyway it's uh right near the sam kong intersection in the middle of phuket world-class water park best water park maybe in thailand uh, certainly in phuket yes i have uh, i was there for a media junket got a free pass to go there and uh was there with my partner and uh, we had a great day after about two of the some of the rides um and uh, after a couple of those, I went, no more rides for me. Uh, but uh, there's also, I think it's called Coral Cove or something, where you get in a, one of those um, tubes and you just go floating around on the tube. That's more my scene. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Kids have a great time there. Of course, it's hot all the time, even when it's raining. It's hot. So, uh, well, uh, it, it, it's doing quite well. Not obviously as well this time of the year as it was, say, during the high season. But I think they're making money and uh, it's very well appointed, nicely run. And uh, yes, yeah, certainly if you've got kids, definitely take them to the Anamanda Water Park near Sam Kong in uh, the middle of Phuket. Uh, Tim, David Spong, how can us immigrants from the US? Oh, yeah, I think I've already done that one. Uh, I hope that your beach venture guy, I'm just, uh, and Amanda. I think we're all getting it wrong. And Amanda, I think it's Anna Amanda, and, and Amanda, and Amanda, and Amanda, 
probably. Can you take legal action against the contractor, says BLK Bolt? Uh, probably. But I've decided not to because the cost of litigating and the possibility of me recouping my losses are not only on my own estimation, but on my lawyer's estimation, extremely slim. And you make an enemy. And the one thing you don't want to do in Thailand is make enemies with ties. Uh, I'll say no more about that. Maybe ask Tim, I'm not in Phuket. <laughs> uh, oh, Kelly, Kelly Eggers, thank you very much. Love to buy both you and Steve a coffee. I'm going to spend that and I'm going to tell Steve when I see him next. This is a coffee courtesy of Kelly Eggers. And uh, Steve, who loves his, his coffee, people have been dropping him in coffee. And they've been watching grumpy old men and they give him coffee. They don't give it to me. They give it to him. It's not fair. Anyway, I'll share that coffee with Steve and we can plot what we're going to talk about next time. Wig Alert, thank you very much. Uh, your delivery is the most digestible. Thank you very much, Wig Alert. Interesting space, the YouTube space. I've still got this visa story to talk about. Um, it's a very interesting space and uh, there are some people who do it better than others. I mean, we're sort of all, you know, budding TV presenters, I suppose. But it's an interesting space to work in. And I mean, I'm learning every day. Uh, we did our one year anniversary two days ago. And we may or may not have hit uh, 25,000 subscribers now. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, stop what you're doing, stop watching and subscribe before you do anything else. But we did, uh, I think we've, if we haven't reached 25,000, we're just a few subscribers away. So thank you very much to all those people and all the support. I mean, I do get uh, a little bit overwhelmed by the support and considering that there's all these people watching. I mean, I I don't know why. Uh, but thank you very much, Wig Alert, and uh, appreciate your, uh, your contribution. Lost in Australia, Dave, used to drive up to Sakon Nakon from Bangkok, but it used to put 100, well, 1,200 but under the sun visor to fix the times i was stopped by the cops for no reason on the way up uh look i have to say driving in a car i have been stopped at checkpoints but uh they've just been checking the registration and um uh, just having a look through my passport but they've never asked me for money uh on a motorbike yes i have been stopped and uh, and hit for a few baht from time to time thank you lost in australia dave meta duh our currency is down the drain used to get one to six now it's one to two if lucky i don't know where you're from i don't know what currency you're talking about i, I don't understand <laughs> you need to tell me more information paul cowan hi tim what made you choose phuket over other destinations you could have settled in uh i'll get get to you queensland tiger in a moment um okay well the reason i chose phuket because 12 years ago i decided i was going to move to thailand and i hadn't even visited phuket in the past but i wanted to live on the beach now i had been to Pattaya beach i think the beaches there are generally not that good since they've uh, done a lot of reclamation work on the sort of the southern part of Pattaya, Jom Tiem, South, Pat South Pattaya Beach, uh, I think that's been a big improvement to the beaches, although the quality of the sand is not particularly good. It's got a, a lot of shells in it because, of course, it's been dredged in from offshore and then dumped to, uh, to make the beach bigger. Here in Phuket, there's 32 beaches. They're all natural beaches. Uh, they've all got, you know, palm trees. You've got a huge diversity of different types of beaches from Nai Han to Patong to Kamala, uh, Mai Kau, Bang Tau, Karon, Kata, Katanoi. I mean, there's so many beaches and they've all got their own character and personality. Then there's even some beaches on the other side which don't get the waves and they've got their own personality as well. Then there's 30 islands just off Phuket, uh, mostly in Panga Bay, and they've got uh, beautiful beaches as well. So the quality of the beaches is great. So I did come here to sort of enjoy the beach life. 
I don't live anywhere near the beach where I am now. The opportunity came to live near the beach. I won't be on Phuket, but I'll actually be closer to the airport driving time wise than I am from where I live now. So um, I, I've got the opportunity to live on the beach, something I've always wanted to do. I can afford to do it, and I'm looking forward to doing it. Phuket, it's got uh, the rainforest, it's got the, uh, the hills, uh, it's got the western vibe if you want to go to shopping centres. It's got far, five or six excellent markets. It's got Patong if you want to have fun. Uh, then it's got all those different beaches and communities. It's got all the different uh, zones for uh, expats, places like Katu and Chalong. You've got the whole north of the island, which is pretty much nobody there at all. So it's, uh, a, it's got an international airport. To me, that makes it uh, a really convenient place <coughs> to live. Um, it's an international airport. There are, I don't know, 200-something flights a day. You can fly on any day from Phuket Airport to just about every continent in the world. So it's just a convenient place to live. People who say, oh, it's so expensive. Well, yeah, if you're going to live in Patong, it's going to be expensive to live. But if you choose your community places like Katu and Chalong, Kokao, Paklok, uh, and you find the right place and you are happy to eat uh, Thai food and live like the Thais, then it's not going to be any more expensive than other places in Thailand. Perhaps uh, places in the northeast might be a bit cheaper, of course. Uh, but, but no, I mean, I live, um, I, I've been paying, well, 20,000 baht for this house, five bedroom house, big backyard, big enough. I put a pool in there and the cats have still got plenty of room to play. It's got four mango trees, air conditioned rooms. Uh, it's got a big kitchen, four bathrooms. Uh, I'm wanting nothing, a gated community. I don't think that's expensive. So um, yeah, this sort of meme that Phuket is somehow very expensive. I, I, I don't subscribe to that. Unless, of course, you are over on the West Coast and hanging around the tourist traps, then yeah, of course, it's going to be expensive. Um, the Queensland Tiger, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Saying, number one. Well, I'm the number one person who's doing a live chat on YouTube tonight, wearing a red shirt, sitting in his living room with a blue wall. Number one. This is interesting. Uh, as I, oh, I've got to press this button. Excuse me for a moment. Just talk amongst yourselves. Bangkok Post reporting tourist visa requirements eased for Chinese visitors. Now, the government's further relaxed its tourist visa requirements and shortened the standard time required for approving visas for Chinese visitors in a bid to make the process easier for people visiting the country. Now, before you go, oh, those Chinese people, they're getting all the favours. Oh, what about us poor expats, tourists coming from Western countries? Nah. Well, just relax because they still have to have a either a, a visa before they come to Thailand or they have to apply for a visa on arrival. Most people from Western countries get a uh, visa waiver where you don't have to, you can just put your toothbrush in your backpack, arrive in Thailand, roll up to immigration, give them your passport and they'll stamp you in for mostly 30 days. The Chinese still have to either pre-apply or do a visa on arrival. So uh, let's see, under the newly relaxed visa requirements, Chinese visitors to Thailand are required to submit along with their visa application just six documents, still a bit of a process, uh, namely their passport, three photographs, an air ticket, a document showing their accommodation in Thailand, a document certi certifying their permanent residence, uh, that is in China, I suppose, and financial statements. So it's still quite onerous, even though they've tried to relax things a little bit for Chinese visitors, who, despite all that paperwork, are still the most numerous visitors in Thailand and, well, Phuket at the moment as well. So, uh, yes, it also says this will truncate the application process from 14 to 7 working days, she noted. That's if you pre-apply, you can still have a visa on arrival. But that means you get off the plane and before you get to immigration, you have to go through that process 
of uh, applying for and paying for a visa. I can't remember what the rate is at the moment. I think 2,000 baht. Uh, okay, so let's just, uh, some more of your comments. Good heavens, I've been nearly going for an hour. Uh, with 10 to 20 million tourists, you'll get a few incidents, says D. Sandy. Well, you're absolutely right. You get people coming to Thailand, there's a bit of a cultural difference. You go to a place like Pattaya or maybe Soy Cowboy. Uh, maybe you go to Bangalore Road in Phuket, you get a few drinks in you. And uh, yeah, those misunderstandings and cultural differences can suddenly get a little bit nasty. So yeah, you're right. Uh, with all the tourists coming here at the moment. I think uh, we've had 11 or 12 million tourists so far this year. Uh, there's going to be the occasional fracas. And these days, people have got the phone to record it. And where does it go? It gets sent to the media. It goes on social media. Paul Cowan says, uh, what made you choose Phuket over other destinations? You could have settled. I think I've done that one. Cruising the Thai way, living on the beach is a dream come true. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Lucky me. Mind you, after 64 years, I've sort of earned it. Um, it's not a fancy place. I mean, it's not a two-story glass beach house with uh, sort of staff at my every whim. Uh, it's going to be a sort of a quieter life. But I'll still be doing my daily show, but I've got a desk at the window looking out to the beach. So it'll be a lovely place to sit and do the program every day and uh, you'll be able to join in with me. Uh, Happy birthday, Queen Sirikit, says Paul Henry Henry. When is her birthday? This is the, uh, the, the wife, am I allowed to say wife? of uh, the former king of Thailand, Pumi Pon Day. So she was married to him. She's very elderly, but uh, she's the queen mother now, and uh, happy birthday to her uh, today or sometime over the weekend. Um, question, soy dogs and traffic worry me. What's your thoughts? Melbourne is more dangerous. Shano Traveller, uh, look, Soy dogs, I've, all the years driving here, I've never had a soy dog rush out onto the street. I mean, sometimes they do sleep pretty close on the sides of the roads. And, uh, you know, Thai people and everybody else, they just sort of, you know, just veer around them. But I've never had one run out onto the road. I've never been attacked by a soy dog. Uh, I've fed a few in the past that lived close to houses I've lived in. Uh, I don't think the soy dogs are a particular problem. They may be for some ethnicities that have got a problem with dogs. Not so much ethnicities, but uh, religious groups. But generally, I don't think soy dogs... There can be localised problems, but that's really a matter. Call the Orbitor or the local animal, animal welfare group, and uh, they will usually attend to the problem. Uh, with the... What's it called? It's the four things. The, uh, capture neuter, rehabilitate, rehome. That's, yeah, that's what they do. Rarely do they put the dogs down, or the cats. Uh, the Snives, Massachusetts is starting into fall. We need global warming back. Starting into fall. Fall as in autumn. Thank you, the Snives. Good luck there in Massachusetts. I used to go there, uh, been there a couple of times to a place called Rhode Island. I think that's near Massachusetts uh, for yachting. Oh, very, very fancy there. Uh, Steve Ross. Steve's in the building. Steve, really, you should get out there. You should be out there uh, gallivanting around, going to all those fancy nightclubs along Turtle Beach uh, because you'll need to have a good sleep because we've got to do Grumpy Old Men on Sunday. So uh, behave yourself. Steve will be having a bong on the beach, says Stephen James. He may indeed well be doing so, and good luck to him. John D. So what did up from Melbourne in Australia? Uh, D. Sandy. Yes, Zeta. And they're talking to each other. Uh, everybody's talking to Steve now. Steve, you do it every time. You're just taking over. 
Greg Partridge, Pattaya is a safe city. Like most in the world, I've walked the streets at all hours and have never seen an altercation. Just control yourself as you should at home. <clears throat> I think the problem is there's just groups of uh, foreigners from different cultures and, of course, they're all getting a couple of drinks in them. And so inevitably you're going to have some altercations. I mean, it's just going to happen, isn't it? Uh, Bill G, thank you for your response, and I understand the bad news gets uh, the reporting. With such reports weekly, it just seemed uh, like too many for such a safe country. I agree that it's mostly safe here. Coming in late, says Eileen. Eileen, did you bring a note? I need to know where you've been. Have you already updated on the revolutions? What revolutions? (laughs) Oh, the renovations. (laughs) Uh, Well, not really. I I think probably next week. I'm waiting until I've got something to show you. I've got all the before video and before photos. Uh, Steve saw it. He's sort of seen the progress. Uh, But I think next week I'm going to have the furniture in there, have little knickknacks, the paintings on the wall, and I can take some photos and show you the before and after. At the end of the day, that's all you want to see. You go and watch those renovation shows on TV. You watch the first five minutes to see what it was like, and then you just fast forward through all the bullshit to get to the last three minutes when they reveal the finished job. So I'm going to save you all the uh, in-between bits and just show you the grand reveal. Uh, Okay, Um, I think we're sort of running out of time here. Uh, Thai Air, thank you very much for your very kind and generous support. Hello, Tim from Chiang Mai. I enjoyed your daily news program and your grumpy old men on Sunday. We can thank Steve Ross for that as well because he's watching and he gets very jealous. Uh, So uh, anything else we have to talk about here? Shakespeare. I get it. Waving. Hello back. Strategic player, Steve, you have it sussed. Yes. Uh, Bill G. Oh, you and Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve. Uh, should consider doing a meet and greet at a coffee shop for your Thai fans to come and visit you both. Maybe once every three or four months. Well, Bill, I'll talk to Steve about this on your behalf. <clears throat> I think Steve and I are a little bit... Um, averse maybe a bit risk averse uh steve's already had a few people drop in they've sort of figured out where he's living and they've just dropped in which is sort of seems all very pleasant and chummy but from the point of view of uh, us silly old youtubers it can be a little bit off-putting and we do need to be a little bit uh, careful that uh, you just don't know who's going to walk in through the door I, I, I've talked about it many times about uh, doing meets and greets. Uh, I've had a few bad experiences running into people who've uh, tracked me down, people who have stopped me in the street and started berating me, threatening me. Uh, so I'm a little bit risk averse about doing a, a fan meet. I don't want to at the same time be, uh, you know, sort of having to have a whole lot of unnecessary, well, maybe unnecessary security but uh yeah we're just a little bit concerned by who might turn up and it's not the 99 percent of you who are fabulous people and we'd absolutely adore chatting to you it's just that one percent who we don't really know what their intentions are and um i'll talk to steve about it we'll see I think something that Steve and I might do in a couple of weeks maybe is a live program, uh, if I can talk Steve into it. So uh, we'll see how we go, all right? We'll see how we go. I think a live program's something that we could uh, we could do on a, a Sunday, especially if I'm sort of living up there. If we can sort of wind up the internet machine and get a bit of 5G somewhere, we could probably do a live stream. Uh, Timothy Hans says, Steve is in the house... Uh, now behave you lot, says Tony Hedges. You're just trying to wind him up with all the where's Steve stuff. Matty, are you the Matty, says D. Sandy. Who is the Matty? Uh, okay, uh, two more and then it's time to go. Marigold Project, we need closure also. We feel your pain, says Matty. So you have to bring it uh, up from time to time and let us know that you're healing. Look, I'm healing. Uh, I had a couple of rough weeks, as Steve was aware of it. 
had to put up with my grumpiness. Uh, I'm feeling fine at the moment. Everything's okay. We all have, um, you know, uh, the ups and downs on the roller coaster of life. Uh, I just had a f- few weeks of uh, things going wrong, but at the moment things are going right. I'm feeling fine, and uh, yeah. So appreciate your concern, but um, everything is okay at the moment. And oh, uh, Thai Air, thank you very much. I'll uh, just rush down here. A few more questions. <gasps> Sorry, I just can't get to everybody today. Uh, 8,000 deaths on the road so far this year, says Gippo. Thank you very much uh, for a bit of a downer there. Teddy Bear, I would prefer to give all those docs to the embassy in my home country and get the visa from them because arrival will be a breeze then. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if I'm a Chinese citizen and I'm coming to Thailand, yeah, just short circuit the visa on arrival, get one before you leave, and then you can uh, enjoy the rush from the aeroplane to immigration like we all do. Gary Adams, hi Tim, watching your show since you used to be on the other one, you can say Tiger, Uh, keep up the great work, live uh, in St. Louis. Uh, He's asking about rabies, Tim says, Jeff Simmons, oh I'm sorry if I've missed, yeah look I mean if you do get bitten by a dog, uh, you would go and have a rabies shot uh, routinely. I've never been, never been bitten by a soy dog, actually never been bitten by a dog, had dogs most of my life. Now I've got cats somewhere. They just came into my life uh, and I adore them and they'll be coming up with me to Turtle Beach. Uh, Buddha lets them live, says Shano Travel. Yeah, uh, the the Thais don't like uh, euthanizing animals. They don't like uh, sterilizing them. Uh, There are some vets that will sterilize your pets, but uh, still many vets in Thailand won't. Uh, How did you find available landed homes for rent in Phuket? Uh, Look, um, if you want the the bargains, you have to drive around and do some hard uh, research. Driving around, looking at the signs, talking to friends, friends of a friend, heard about da-da-da-da-da. If you go to all the real estate websites, you're going to be paying a premium. So I would recommend if you want to go and live in an area, drive around, find the areas that you want to live, talk to friends, drive around. There are signs if people are renting. That's the easiest way to find a property. Not the easiest way, sorry. That's where you're going to find the best value in properties. But it will take some research. It'll take some time. It'll take some driving. It'll take, uh, you know, effort in contacting friends and talking around and asking other people what they know. Um, that's how I found the last two or three properties, which have been great, good value, and I think everybody's always surprised when they see uh, the value that I've found in properties. I don't buy. I personally don't recommend that people buy in Thailand. I think rental is much safer as a foreigner, but uh, there are people who buy for whatever reason. If you are going to buy, do lots and lots and lots of homework. More so than uh, anywhere else. I have a question for Steve. Who was the girl in the background for the latest video? You can ask Steve on his channel, which is Steve Ross with an E, with three E's actually, but it's got a R O S E. Subscribe to his channel and you can ask him on his channel that particular question. Uh, Anthony Orm, good stuff. Tim on the videos, apologies on the hotel investment. Uh, well, you don't have to apologize. Uh, we all have good investments and bad investments. What are your plans for the future? My plan is I will be living up in Turtle Beach from the end of September. I'll have uh, probably at least one, maybe two properties that I'll be renting out for short-term rentals. They're going to be fabulous little places and we're going to make sure that when you visit, you're going to be looked after and have a really good time and hopefully enjoy some of the charms of the Pang A province, uh, which some of them may not be that well known to people. But uh, yes, we look forward to you visiting. I'll tell you more about that when they're ready. Uh, Life of a celebrity, I suppose. Uh, Well, we're talking about doing the the live meets and stuff. I certainly don't consider myself a celebrity or a personality or anything like that. 
Uh, but look, um, I just have had a few bad experiences, and sadly so as Steve, and it ju- just makes us think twice about doing um, any meets and greets. Now, there are some people who uh, really dine out on it. I mean, retired, retired working for you? Chris is great at doing meet and greets. He's got set up full tours where he takes his, uh, his subscribers out. Chris is about six foot something, and uh, I wouldn't want to get in trouble with Chris. <laughs> he can fend for himself, but uh, I'm, you know, 64 and five foot seven. And Steve, well, he's just a year older. He's a bit taller than me, but neither of us want to have any argy-bargy with people. But uh, look, I mean, I think it's a mindset thing. Um, Anyway, look, I'll chat to Steve about it and we'll get back to you. How's that? Uh, See soon. Bangkok Pat was bitten by a dog. Oh, okay. Well, hope he recovers. Uh, I got bit by a dog in Koh Chang, says Manny Jackson. Uh, Love Meditation, you should change the Sunday program name to Old Men and One is Very Grumpy. Who's grumpy, me or Steve? Yeah, look, people are saying we shouldn't have called it uh, Grumpy Old Men. Matty, thank you very much as we sign out. Uh, Thank you very much. Extremely generous. Grumpy Old Men donation. Oh, don't. I'll have to give half to Steve. Hi, Steve, LOL. Matty, I'll make sure Steve gets his half. I guarantee Steve has seen that and he'll be reminding me. But that's very generous of you. So thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, where can I see you? you talked about the hotel? Is there a video? There's no video. Scroll back to the start of this video and you can have a look. Nice show. Good night, says Teddy Bear. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, Grumpy Old Men is um, uploaded It'll be available to see on Sunday, 8.30 a.m. Thai time. Otherwise, I'll see you next week with um, our daily TNT. And, yeah, maybe by the end of next week we'll have a prime minister, maybe even a government. I'm not getting my hopes up. Uh, If I don't see you before, have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for dropping in on a Friday night. Very appreciative of your support. Thank you to all those people who made uh, some very generous and unsolicited donations. I mean, I am very grateful. I don't possibly know how I can thank you, but uh, it does obviously help me in, uh, you know, keep me in T-shirts and um, all these fancy toys I use to do the streaming. So thanks. Uh, Have a fantastic Friday night. Uh, My um, friend from Melbourne uh, up in Chiang Mai, hope your football team won. And to everybody else, have a fantastic rest of Friday night, a good Saturday, and we'll see you on Sunday for Grumpy Old Men or maybe next week. Thanks for dropping in.